What's up guys, welcome to the first ever episode of Beacon Gaming. I'm Jake, and I'll be showing you a new game every week, whether it be indie, AAA, or something in between. I'm gonna let you know what's good, what's bad, and whether or not it's worth your time. Let's get right into it. The game first came to my attention because it's being published by Viz Media, the company that brings Shonen Jump to the West. Not only did it have a super cute art style, but the combat looked pretty unique. But a game cannot live on art style alone, so how's that story? In the world next door, Earth exists parallel to another world, Imri's. Imri's is a world of monsters and magic, and Earth is, well, Earth. The people of Imri's are almost just like humans. They wear clothes, use the internet, and watch kung fu movies. The only difference is their population is made up of demons, fairies, and other mythical creatures. Almost all of them are friendly. Emphasis on almost. The game takes place during the festival, an event that happens once every 20 years where a portal connects the two worlds and travel between them is possible. Jun, an Emery superfan, is chosen to be one of the few humans to cross over onto Emery's for one whole day. When she gets there, however, things take a turn for the worse when she misses her opportunity to make it back to Earth. Now this wouldn't be much of an issue, except for the fact that humans can't survive on Emery's for more than a few days. Jun, along with her internet friend Lisa and a whole cast of colorful characters, must venture into the depths of Emery's in order to find a way home. The story is definitely the world next door's best aspect. The characters are adorable and super likable. The game is basically begging for a fandom to form around it. There's a whole bunch of optional dialogue options with almost all of the characters, letting you learn a little more about whoever strikes your personal fancy. The game also lets you choose different dialogue during many points. While it may change a few interactions, I don't think it has much impact on the story as a whole. While the ride to the end of the game is exciting, cute, and even suspenseful at times, the payoff is pretty weak. Multiple interesting plot points are just kind of dropped and wrapped up through pictures at the end of the game, which was definitely a big disappointment to me. The ride to the end, however, was fun enough for me to not feel like I wasted my time. The world next door features some pretty unique combat. You visit four dungeons throughout the game, and in them you find grievances. Monsters who have been corrupted by magic and attack anyone around them. It's like a match three game, like Candy Crush, except you're running away from an evil crocodile who attacks you if it gets too close. It's truly a stressful experience. By matching different shapes together, you can use different kinds of magic to attack your enemies. Fireballs, black holes, electricity, physical slashes, healing. Hell, you can even call your allies in for a little extra backup. The combat takes a little bit of time to get used to, but becomes incredibly satisfying once you get the hang of it. Taking down monsters feels good, and as the game goes along, you run into a few fights that can be incredibly frustrating. There are a few boss battles to mix things up, but they aren't terribly challenging. I found most encounters with normal enemies to be much harder than the boss battles. You would think that with a great story, lovable characters, and fun combat, that this would be a game that would be a must-buy, right? Well, about that. The only thing that keeps me from fully recommending this game is the fact that it is super short. Like, you can beat this game in two hours kind of short. If you suck at games, like me, or take a little longer to appreciate the world, also me, it might take you a little bit longer. The game features a few side quests that can pad out your playtime, but be warned, there's no reward for doing them. So you only really want to go into them if you are really feeling a connection to the world and the characters. Now, personally, I spent about four hours with the game, but most people say they only spend about two, so that's definitely something to keep in mind. The world next door is a ton of fun. I fell in love with the world and the characters of Emery's, and I would love to spend more time there. With such a short gameplay time, however, it's hard to recommend. This would be a big yes for $5, but for $15, only pick this one up if it really piques your interest. Alright guys, thanks so much for watching the first episode of Beacon Gaming. Stay tuned for the next one and keep on gaming.